you can actually save thousands of dollars by propagating fruit trees in particular from cuttings. Uh, greetings all. I don't know about you, but in this day and age, buying fruit trees, I mean any tree, but in particular fruit trees, is super expensive these days. And although I know everybody needs to make a living in this world, um, there is nothing wrong with you trying to actually grow and propagate cuttings from your fruit trees. I'm actually sitting in front of a pomegranate tree here. It's in a couple of stages in its life. It's just got some new buds, which are coming for the new season. And I have some uh, old pomegranates down here. I wouldn't say they're old, but they are certainly ready to pick. I was hoping they would get a little bit riper. But through my own experimentation, I have come to learn that pomegranate is actually a fantastic tree for propagating cuttings. I have a couple of examples down here that um, I have been growing for, or I would say that these are perhaps maybe eight months, maybe eight months old. I want to actually try and grab one out without teasing it too much to see how much root growth is on there. And you can see that there's some good root growth here and that's ready to plant in the ground. In the beginning, I wasn't sure how well uh, the, the pomegranate cutting would actually strike, but I was willing to chance it and give it a go. And this one here, let's see how good this one is. I've actually got a bougainvillea, that's a bougainvillea cutting that hasn't actually done well at all. So let's just check this one and see how we're doing. Oh, this has got a good root system here. So these weren't actually, oops, these weren't actually started in pots. They uh, were started in my, my method of propagating. If you've seen my previous videos, it's the beloved sawdust. I cannot recommend sawdust as a, um, propagating medium more. It's incredible. And the good thing about sawdust, and you can see there's a little bit of mix in sawdust, of sawdust in here. The good thing about sawdust is that um, it holds moisture, but it allows for airflow. And any of you guys that have been uh, propagating and it's ended in frustration because your cuttings have got too wet and they're they've just rotted because of too much moisture. Sawdust stops that from happening, provided that you don't water it too much, because the good thing about sawdust is that somehow it holds moisture and it allows for airflow. And that's critical for cuttings in their, in their stages. So I found that I had very good luck with pomegranates um, in fact, I almost lost another pomegranate variety called the Azerbaijan um, due to some uh, worm eating or bug, uh, a, a borer. It's like a, I don't know what it, kind of bug it is, but it bore through um, in the center stem of my pomegranate and almost killed it. But I managed to salvage it and it's come back now. I've shifted it. Um, but pomegranate is, so I actually took cuttings of that just as it was dying out. Um, and thankfully though, it has come back and I haven't had to worry about it. But pomegranates are fantastic for taking cuttings. I've also found if you have mulberries, uh, mulberry trees, they are phenomenal as well. And I've got several mulberry cutting trees um, dispersed all throughout my garden here in the desert in South Australia. We live in a very arid climate here and we have not had rain for an incredibly long time. And we're all hoping that the rain comes soon because everything's so dry. However, I have a pretty good irrigation setup going on here. And so long as your plants are well watered, particularly with irrigation, unless you are living in a place with high rainfall, I cannot recommend a drip irrigation more because once I put all my fruit trees on drip irrigation, 
um, their growth levels were spectacular. Those of you that have, are following my channel, you know that I've propagated a lot of roses as well. And as I mentioned in that video, roses in this country can go from anywhere between uh, $20 to $30 per rose. Um, bare root, that's a bare root rose. If you're getting a rot, uh, a rot, if you're getting a rose in a pot, it's actually a lot more than that. So there is nothing wrong with trying your luck with cuttings because who knows, you may actually be surprised at how well um, they grow. But I believe the key and critical factor of your propagating um, comes down to the medium that you use. If you have something porous like sawdust, if you don't if you don't have sawdust readily available in your area, you could perhaps try um, you could try pumice, um, but it has to have that same cons consistency like sawdust. But I have found with all my propagating experiments, nothing beats sawdust. And provided the sawdust hasn't been treated, it's, that's a key thing to remember as well. So let me show you um, a couple of plants that I have propagated from cuttings, saving myself hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, and you can too. If you have a little bit of patience, you can pretty much propagate anything. Um, granted, I haven't managed to propagate um, some plants all that well. I almost was successful with a native plant here in Australia called Grevillea. And I know that this can be propagated and I've, I've had plants with roots on them, but uh, I had them in water and they died, <laughs> they died. So if there's a lot of trial and error and if you have the patience for it, um, you too can have fantastic results. And it's all about experimenting. Um, it's all about trying and who knows, you may be really successful and um, have a garden that's just full of cuttings, cuttings, plants that have come from cuttings. Why not save thousands of dollars and try your luck with growing plants from cuttings because you can see from this pomegranate right here how how well it's it's grown from cuttings another plant although they are not propagated from cuttings are date palms i've actually grown these date palms from seed and i have a whole bunch of them in my hothouse right now although over the summer they haven't been in the hothouse but because it's winter, um, I have wanted to put them in the hothouse as of course they're a desert palm and they love heat, real strong heat. And you can see since I have put it in the hothouse, I have uh, some fresh fronds coming up, which is fantastic. Um, but this again, you can buy a packet of medjool dates from your local grocer and put the seeds in water for a little while with some heat, they will germinate. Um, sometimes after a month, it takes a little while, um, or you can put them straight in the ground. Keep them really hydrated though, because they love, love water. That's one that wasn't successful. So I can uh, throw that away. But I've actually got dates from Saudi Arabia, varieties that you can't get in this country, and I've propagated them from seed. Um, because there is a um, date farm in South Australia that I have actually bought dates from. And, you know, they're expensive per palm. I would say now, I mean, this was years ago, but the palms probably are 250 to $300. 250 to 350 each, each. And that's a lot of money. If you want 10 to 15 date palms in your garden, that's a lot of money. So why not try and grow them yourself? I have plenty of these around the garden as well. Um, and it's a real treat. It feels really good to be able to grow things from seed, provided they have a little time and patience and care, and you can be successful at growing these yourself as well. So let me go around and show you some of my other 
plants that are being propagated from cuttings. I actually have two little mulberries that were planted uh, a couple of months ago, just at the end of summer. And they're heading into their dormancy period now. And I put made sure they're next to some drippers. So that's gonna be interesting to watch as this comes back to life in spring to see how the growth rate is. But that's actually a red mulberry. Here in my rose garden, desert rose garden, I should say, uh, I have a pomegranate that was a cutting from the mother plant that I've just sitting in front of. And look, she's doing really well since she's been put in the ground. Got all them beautiful new little shoots. And there you have it. That saves you about 50 bucks, $50 of buying a fully grown pomegranate bush or tree. Sure, it's gonna take a little while longer than, you know, a bigger plant, but that's still saving you money. That's, you've got the genes right there. Stock from the main mother plant and all you've done is propagated that and with a little time and effort, you have created another plant freely from mother nature and saved money. So why not try your luck? Here's one of those date palms that I planted from seed that's now doing very well as well with some nice fronds there.